Hello, everyone. Good morning from the UK. Good afternoon from India. And we will soon have someone who's going to call good evening or good night. So whichever part of the world you're from, we are here to cover you. <laughs> yeah. I'm just so excited for the last day of Zendler for the year 2022. Yes, me too. And it's so exciting that you said we're covering those three time zones just now. So we're just having a little pre-chat with um, our first awesome speaker. Um, and yeah, an amazing sort of kudos to her because it's, you know, 1 a.m. where she is. So we're super grateful for her to be staying up to be with us all today. Absolutely, absolutely. And with that, I would love to invite Eileen. She, she would be covering how to declutter your tech with Zendler. And I think that is one of the most important topics because yesterday I was speaking to someone, one of the Zendler users from India, and she said that, you know, uh, taking care of the website, taking care of the tech is not what my craft is. My craft is what I teach. So she is a performance coach. She said, my craft is to teach performance and help you how to perform your best at your workplace. I do, I'm not good at website. I'm not good at tech. So all the coaches and creators would want to learn from Eileen how to perform better, which is not exactly your craft, and yet be able to sell what is your craft. So I'm really looking forward to her talk. Yes, me and too. I, and I think we'll have her on just in a few minutes. Eileen, you're there. Hi. Hi there. <laughs> Welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much, first of all, for starting up so late. Like it's like 1 a.m. for you, and you are here to share your expertise, to share your value. Thank you so much. Thank you. I'm I'm excited to be here. Um, I I learned about Zendler in I think it was February or March. It was probably maybe a little bit before that even. Um, when I was helping uh, a group who were building a a, a, a a virtual summit using Zendler, and I had never seen it before, and I was looked at it and I went, well, this this is really interesting. It's it's different and it's it's bringing things together and one of the things that i do um, in my business is is help coaches especially um, with decluttering their tech and and decluttering can mean a couple different things um, sometimes it's because you have so many different systems right Th this is this is something that we all struggle with i know we all do we call it fomo right? Fear of missing out. So your, your, your emails, they just, your email, your inbox is just full, right? Your inbox is full. It's saying, wow, you got to buy this. Oh, I have a deal on this. Don't forget this sale. You got 24 hours to buy this thing. Look at this great thing I just found. And you buy stuff. You just buy stuff nonstop. And this is what happens to my clients. Or, or they follow some guru or they're in a program, a mastermind of some sort, and they're told, here's the list of things that you need to buy. Before you even get started, you haven't even got a, a, an idea of what you're going to sell. And you already have a list of all the, the tech that you need to go purchase. And there's a whole long list of it. And it's expensive. It takes a lot of time to implement right? And it's not your thing. You're, you're not here trying to spend your time all on the tech and figuring out all the pieces. That's what I do. I love doing that. But you shouldn't have to do that to build your business. And so I see people, they, they, they're, especially when they're getting started and they think, I need to spend thousands of dollars to buy this, to buy this, and then I gotta go hire somebody to help me, or I gotta buy another course, FOMO again, buy more courses, more courses, more courses, having more things and adding and adding these things to their list. And in the end, what happens is they don't get started. They don't get started. 
and or they start and they stop and they do something else and they buy some other piece and they this is what I see over and over and over again so that is the biggest part of the clutter another part of the clutter is that some people will say well I'll figure it out myself and so now they create all these different ways of doing things in their own systems but they're 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 difficult to manage right so they've created their own system in a way that they think makes sense but really is what it is is well I needed to do this so I built this thing then I needed to do something else so I figured out a way to do that and then something else and they figured out a way to do that but it, what, what the truth is, is that they're spending a lot of time with all these different systems that they've built in their business and they're not automated and they could be. So here's, here's some examples is, is simply sending out an email when someone signs up. I see people who don't have that automated. The, the person signs up on their list and then they write an email, or maybe they have an, a, a, it copied on in a Google Doc or someplace else, and then they copy it and send it to the person. That's not very automated. It's taking a lot of time out of their day every time somebody signs up as a lead on their, on their website. And then there's this building your website. Building a website takes time. It takes money. It takes a lot of planning and months of time to get it organized and get it built and um and there's a lot of energy put into building your website without a lot of thought about what happens with the website like what good is a website if you don't have an opt-in and what good is an opt-in if you don't have a funnel <laughs> right so you need to think about the whole picture and what i see people do is they get very busy in that one space and then they don't know what else to do and so what i'm i try to do with my clients is to talk about what is your goals what is it that you want what are what are you, what is your passion what are you what are you trying to do what what do you want to how do you want to help people right you don't you're not helping people by spending hours frustrated with the tech on a website that maybe isn't actually going to sell your clients anything instead what if you could take that energy and put it into building what you want teaching people the information that you want them to learn helping people um, with with the things that you know you can help them with and it's hard to do that if you're spending all your time juggling five six seven different programs and and nothing is really working exactly the way you want it so last year when i started looking at at zendler it was really a different kind of program i i have worked in all-in-one programs zendler is not the first one i've worked on many other programs actually um but zendler is it's just laid out differently is what i would say it, it really does make it easy for someone who is not techie to follow it. Now, are there some interesting things that you can do that are techie that I do that I wouldn't expect my clients to do? Absolutely. That's part of what I love about it is that I can go in there and I can do some things in the back end. I can put some coding in there and make it look a certain way if I want to but you don't have to. And that's the key is that you don't have to be an expert to use Zendler. And Z one of the things I saw here is Zendler connects all the pieces. So if you, you're trying to build something and I'll tell you something I do, I build summits. So I built virtual summits and you're building a virtual summit. Virtual summit has a website. You have to have something for your registration. You have to have an opt-in. You have to have a, a marketing funnel to, to sell the summit. You need an email funnel. You need to capture that list. You may you probably want to tag them 
as well because you want to track the VIP. And then you also may want to have affiliates. So these are all pieces. Well, guess what? A lot of times that ends up being each of those pieces is a different piece of software. And now you have to integrate all those pieces of software to talk to each other. And, and you gotta make it work. And usually you're on a deadline. Now, it's one thing if you're not on a deadline, but when you're in the, running a summit, you're on a deadline because you need to have all these pieces working by a certain date so people can register and that it all works. All right, so if you're trying to put five or six different pieces of software together, you can bet that something's not gonna work with something else. You're gonna end up tearing your hair out at the last minute, almost always, in frustration because something didn't talk to something else. You couldn't get it to connect. You couldn't get it to do exactly the way you wanted it to work. You're gonna have to do something different. Um, there's late nights and last minute changes. But what if you have a system that can do all that and it talks to each other? So the, the, the registration piece, the opt-in piece, that email list is right there inside of Zendler. You can tag it inside of Zendler. You can send emails to the list. You can send emails to, a, you can filter that list and you can send emails just to the people you want to send it to. You can create a course. So now you're, all of your material will be in the course for the VIPs and you can add whatever information you want for them. You, you can, you can, you don't even have to use like a, 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 a system to, to turn on and off the pages. So here's something that is really interesting in, in summits is often people will have a page and they only have it available for 24 or 48 hours. If you can set that up in Zendler, you don't need an extra piece to do that, right? And you can put it right on the page and you can have it set up. So when it hits the deadline, it pops to a page, which sells your VIP. So all of that is built into one system versus having five or six systems, which you're trying to have them all talk to each other and then come together to build your summit. So I, I've been, I've been playing with Zendler for, for my clients. I have, um, I've run a couple summits. I'm running a few more. <laughs> um, and I, I look at some of the things that you can do in Zendler where maybe at the beginning I went, oh, well, I'll, I'll kind of do it this way because I'm so used to what I used to do and how I used to do it. And now that I've worked in it a little bit, I go, wow, there's, you don't need to do all this hard work. You can do it really simply right in the marketing funnels. So the marketing funnels do amazing stuff, right? So you can create marketing funnels and then inside of there, you can put whatever you want on those pages. So it's, it's, it, and I even have a marketing funnel that then pulls up another funnel. <laughs> Um, I built that for, for something that I'm working on and we wanted to have sort of a funnel inside the funnel because we want people to come to the main piece and then we want to branch them off if they're interested in something that's another piece of that. And so then I can then send them to another funnel and a different opt-in just for that piece of it. And you could do that in, in a summit, you could do that for your, your, whatever you're selling that you could you could branch people off into different marketing funnels and then tag them and send them whole different email sequences. And it's all in one tool. You're not trying to do that in three tools and you're not trying to have to, there's no hard ways. It, I think what I, I like is it's simple. You really look at that funnel and you go, wow, I can do that. I, I, I go in here, I edit this, I create, make the page the way I want it to look brings my colors up, all of those things. And it's, it's easy to, to set up. It's obvious what you need to do. Where I have been in some of the all-in-one systems where it's not. And, and I'm saying this as somebody who's very techy and does stuff all like this all the time. And I've been in some of these systems and I'm looking at it and I'm, wow, why is this so hard to do? Why do they make it so hard to find the pieces you need 
And even within some other all-in-one systems, you, you sort of have to leave one spot to go to another to pull things up to get to the thing you need. And it's not clear and it's, it's not simple to set up. In, in Zendler, the marketing funnels are very clear, very easy. Um, and, and when you're doing it, you can do whatever you want in terms of adding pages to it. So, so like I've said, it meant marketing funnels that have multiple pages beyond the, the default. So the default has, you can just use it that way, but you can add your own. And you can add different um, funnels off the funnels and you can do, do tags out of there. So one of the nice things is when you have the opt-in and you have this pop-up come up, you can, you can set it up however you like with your colors, your branding, your style. It's super easy to do and um, it makes everything kind of connect to each other, which I think sometimes it can be really difficult to do, um, particularly if you're using a bunch of different systems to do that, right? Because then you have to build your branding in, in five or six different software packages. And, and that just is a lot of extra work versus building it once and then being able to copy that throughout um, what you're doing in Zendler. Um, one of the things that I I really love is the ability to um, to kind of save things. I, and I did this, I've done this a lot, especially um, when I'm building pages that where I want to uh, say I'm creating something for a summit and I want to create a style, right? So I want to have the video, I want to have um, certain information to like maybe the bio of the person who's speaking, uh, I want to have their their particular links. So I've created some blocks that have a certain style, and then I can just pull that same block on different pages, and and then I don't have to redo it. Again, that work is done for me, and it basically what would I do it once? Maybe it takes me an hour to build this thing to look just exactly the way I want, but now I can copy it over and over. Literally saves me hours of work. I may take me five minutes to make minor edits and that's it. So building it out like that was extremely helpful. Um, and, and there's also some things that I was able to find to do that S similar things in the course section where I was able to use the HTML and just literally copied it and then pasted it to the, to the next uh, lesson or section or wherever I needed it and then pops up and it looks exactly the same. So for when I was building courses where I wanted to have um, have the same look and feel across, it was super easy to build that same look and feel across. So that's one of the things that I really um, uh, like in when I'm building stuff is that a lot of that takes a lot of time usually, but really it's a one time you build something in Zendler and then you can reuse it all over the place in different parts of the system and you don't have to spend more time on it and and it gives it a good look and feel versus I see when you're when I'm trying to do that and I'm in a working in something where I maybe have three or four different systems that I'm connecting the look and feel doesn't look the same it just you can't make it look that way because you have different systems coming in and it would take you so much time to try to build that. You, you basically have to build it all. And you don't, generally speaking, when I'm building a summit, I don't have time to do that because we, there's a very limited uh, time frame in which to build these things out and get it out and running. And, um, and there's, you know, deadlines for it. So I think that's a big part for building summits. But I think even if you're not building a summit and you're you're wanting to, as a coach, you want to build something that reflects you and you don't want to spend a lot of time on it. It's fairly simple to take um, content and upload it. And this is the other thing that I um, I recently uh, was helping a client who has a large number of videos. Um, and so I, I've uploaded videos. Uh, I'm actually 
uploading videos to some other site and amazing how long it's taking to upload those videos. I go into Zendler and I want to upload stuff and it's really simple and streamlined and fairly quick to upload all the videos that I need into the system. So I love that there's this, uh, the media library, which allows you to upload large amounts of content. Number one, that's just amazing in itself, but also that you can bring it in from other places. So I have worked on a number of systems where in, in order to upload content into their system, I had to first download it to my laptop and then, and then upload it into the system. So that's two steps, but I haven't had to do that with Zemler. I've been able to simply upload it from the space where it was already sitting. And so I saved that whole time of downloading it locally and then uploading it to another place because Zendler offers you multiple places where you can pull content from, including Google Drive, which is a big one, and Dropbox. So there's some places where people generally keep their content and you can pull it directly from those places into uh, the media library and have it there and accessible really quickly, um, which makes it super, super easy to use. And it's also the media library uh, the other thing I noticed is it was really easy to go in and edit things if you needed to. You could put like a new name on it, uh, update the names of the of the titles of the files, and 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 see the information that you needed to know about the files. So I mean I think that's also really a, a simple way of managing media, which is a big deal when you're building a site, and especially if you're transferring sites. So. So a lot of times people have, <clears throat> have already built something, um, maybe using a, a mix of other software. And now they're trying to bring all of that over to, to one place and get it all set up. So having it be easy to uh, upload files from wherever you're bringing them from is really important, right? Because you're trying to consolidate from five or six different places. And, and that's a lot of what I do, right? So I'm, I'm helping people declutter and decluttering means <laughs> let's stop using five or six different systems. If you don't need them, let's try to bring everything together into one where you can use a system and, and not have to constantly be trying to manage the connections between systems. Um, I think that's, that's really important. Um, because I, I, here's, here's the thing is if you're a coach and, and you're, you're working with your clients and you're doing, um, courses and videos and webinars and all these different things, do you really want to spend all your time trying to fix your website? <laughs> And fortunately, a lot of people do. You spend a lot of time trying to fix a website, trying to figure out how to make some funnel work, how to get this email sequence to work. Instead, come into a system that is already all built into one place is there's consistency. I think that that maybe that's a, the word I should use is consistency because you go into one place in Zendler and you know, oh, I can find all the information in one place. You can see it very clearly. You know where to go to find the, once, you, once you've once you used it for a short period of time, you're gonna know your way around and you're gonna know how to get to where you need to go. And that's not true when you're using a number of different systems because each one uses a different method to get the information you need. And that's what stops people. Right? That's what stops people from actually getting things done. I've watched this for years. People can be a genius in one tool, one tool. They are amazing that one tool. You add two other tools on there and they suddenly are not able to do anything. Suddenly everything just stops. And, and that's the problem when you have three or four different tools trying to, to manage them all because each of them has a different method of doing things. And so you have to learn all those different methods 
to to really get what you want out of it. If you come into a system that is consistent and uses similar methods all throughout the system, you're you're definitely going to become you know this a genius in this this one thing because once you've been doing it over and over and over you'll understand how this system works and then you can build email sequences you can build funnels you can build all these pieces out because it all looks the same and that, that is the genius of putting it all in one place i i really think that we we try too hard to um look for the best and 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 it's it's a little bit of FOMO. It's a little bit of we're constantly barraged by all the the social media and the emails and the and the ads that are out there to go try this and go try that and this thing's even better and and you know and I see people churn through different software programs, and I think that a lot of that is not sitting down and saying, what is it that I'm trying to do? What is it I need? What are the pieces that I actually need to make my system work? Instead, it's, oh, that that's new and it looks really interesting and it does this one thing amazingly well. And that's great. But the thing is, it might do one thing amazingly well, but it doesn't do other things amazingly well. And so that's not going to help you. That is going to actually stop you because now you're going to sit there and go, wow, it does this thing really well. Oh, but it doesn't do this other thing I need at all. So now you're going to go out and you're going to buy another piece of software. Well, that does one thing really well. Again, it's missing something. And this is how you end up with a third piece and a fourth. And you keep adding more pieces on. And, and at a, after a while, you are frustrated. And this, this is where I see a lot of entrepreneurs. They're, they're frustrated. Um, the, the tech just feels very overwhelming and it stops them from getting things accomplished because they're just stuck in it. And they'll get stuck in one issue, one small thing that's not working because, and, that, and then they don't, they don't get the rest of the things going, right? Because that one thing stops them. It's like, it's like st stuck in the middle and they can't get past that, that block. And so a system that does all the different pieces is going to help you to move faster, right? You want something where you can build a small website. Does it have to be, you know, um, you know, you, there, there are certainly website systems out there that do amazing things, right? Um, and they have a million options on them, but you don't need those. Really, if you think about it, what do you need? You need, you need a page, a homepage for people to come to, to see what you're doing, right? You need a way for them to purchase things from you. You need, they need, you need a way for them to opt in and give you their email so that you can talk to them, connect with them, right? Those things don't require a, a website with all these bells and whistles. For the most part, most people don't need that. They're being sold that. <laughs> They're being sold that, but it doesn't mean that's what you actually need right now. So I think it's really stepping back and saying what what's important to you and understanding that and then then you can say okay i need i need a something that tells people who i am what i do uh has a way for them to give me their email so we can connect uh maybe offers them something for free or low cost so they have something that they gain from coming in um, and then, and then a way for me to send them information, emails, maybe you want to do webinars, um, you know, maybe you're going to do lives on Facebook. So a way for you to connect with people, right? Um, you could maybe do a membership or you're, you, you like, you've decided, well, you know, I've been teaching this information 
and I want to take it and put it into a course so people can access the course if they're not able to get it on Facebook or somewhere else. I, or maybe you had a private thing that you were doing on Zoom. Put it into a course now. So if you can put all of that into one place and people can come in and access that from one place, that's a lot simpler for you, right? Because it's, I think we, we just complicate stuff. I know I complicate stuff. I'm, um, I understand that. And, and it's easy to do because we think, well, I just need this one other thing. And, um, I do think that we're, it's, it's this constant, you know, um, information coming at us, uh, you know, and, and especially if you spend a lot of time on social media, which we tend to do um, in order to, you know, to talk about our businesses, we're on social media, but then we're also consuming it. And in consuming it, we see people go, well, I did this thing and is, isn't this amazing and isn't this amazing. And here's, here's something to know is the person who's selling you that thing what they're using now is not what they did to get where they are. Yeah, really think about that, right? So in order to get where they are, they went through a lot of different iterations to get to that point. And so for you to get to a point where you're, you know, where some of these influences are, and maybe, maybe you don't even want to be there, you're not going to use what they're doing now it doesn't make sense for you. What you want is something that works for you. Something that you can manage, that doesn't get you frustrated, that doesn't require you to learn five different systems, five different ways of doing things. You want to put it all together in a system that makes sense and meets your needs and that you can grow within, right? And that's why I, I really look at systems that do more than one thing and that you can grow it. So if you wanted to just build a website, you could do that in Zenly. You don't have to do anything else. You could have a website with an opt-in and that's it and collect names and use it just for that. And it'd be perfectly fine. And then when you were ready and you're ready, oh, now I wanna do, I wanna send out emails to people. You got that there. Now I'm ready to start a membership. You have that there. All the pieces are there so you can, and you can take them at your speed and you don't have to spend more money and more time and learn something new to do it in. And that is really the focus of what I, I want to talk about to people. And I say, declutter your tech is don't try to keep buying new things to fill some need find something where you can grow within it. And it's okay if you start out and you're not using it all. <laughs> Guess what? That's okay. Because that gives you space to grow and you learn the tool. And now this is your space where you can be a genius in one tool and build off of that. And, and it's also easy if you want to hire somebody at some point to help you, it's one tool. You're not asking for somebody who has expertise in five different systems that have nothing to do with each other, right? So it's, it's, it's a lot easier as, as your business grows to manage it and to hire people to help you with it. So I think it's, <coughs> sorry, <laughs> it's really, um, important to look at from where you are now, where you want to be, right? And, and how you're going to grow your business with the tools that you use. Um, I, I mean, I look at it and I, I actually talk people out of buying expensive things. I've had people come to me and want to spend a lot of money to build something. And I go, I don't, I don't think that's what you need. <laughs> I will talk people out of it. Um, and I will say what you really need is a page where people can come to and sign up. 
and that's it. And that doesn't require spending a lot of, of money and time and energy in building something when all you need is that page. You can start off really easily with that. In Zendler, have a page. It's just your home page. It's just an opt-in. It's with a freebie and that's it. And it's all built already for you. So you just have to go in and do some minor stuff in there. And a lot of it's already sort of there to start with. You're not starting with a blank page. That's another thing too. Blank pages are scary. <laughs> blank pages on websites are really scary for people, which is why a lot of people buy a lot of tools to throw in there to get rid of the blank page. Zemmer has some pages that are already there, these templates. Um, if you look at how the blocks are, you can see more templates underneath there. I know there's more coming in the new year. Um, and so if you can start with something that's not a blank page, that gives you something to start with, and you can put in your colors, you got some colors, some branding, maybe you don't have a whole lot, it's okay. You've got something to start with and you can build from there. And, and that's really important to, to, to think about is you, you, you don't have to come into Zendler and say, well, I have, I already have five or six programs and now I've got to bring it all in here and how much that's going to be. You could also be the person who's just starting out. And if you start out here, you've got something that you can grow into. So you can start with something, some one piece and grow out all of your other pieces within the same system and never have to deal with what other people are doing now, which is pulling information from five or six systems or more into, into a single place. So it's a great thing for somebody who's new to start out in a system, a single system that'll give them the opportunity to grow their business right there. And, and it gives you a lot of different options as to how you're gonna grow your business. Uh, I'm, and, and, it, and the other things I think is the, the idea of you get multiple sites to start with. I don't know about you. I do a lot of different things. Um, I've had quite a few businesses already. And I, I think a, a lot of times entrepreneurs, we, we, we think up new ideas. We, we like doing that. And we like trying new things out. And so I kind of like the idea, well, I could have this other site over there and it could be sort of my play playground site, right? I can go over there and play. Maybe I'm going to create something different over there and try it out. And I have a second site where I can try all my different things, my ideas out on. And I still have my main site and I'm not changing anything on my main site. And that's a, that's a big plus for people because if you were to do that in... On, on other systems, you would literally have to pay to build all that stuff again. Often you would have to pay again to build another site with all of those tools. You don't have to do that with Zemmler. So if you're sitting there, you have your main site, it's all built perfectly. You've got homepage, you've got all the things, funnels, your email sequences, your courses, everything's built out there and you have this great idea. And you're like, I just want to try something out. If you touch anything there, build a new site, just test it there. Create a landing page over there. Create some other things over there and test it. So now you have a testing ground. And that's something that that's um, sometimes hard to do. As, as someone who likes to test things out, play with stuff, I find that I don't, you don't want to do it in a place where I already have things that are set up, right? Because I don't want to mess up anything. So then having this little extra place where I can go to and try things out and see how it works and, oh, you know, this, this idea is working over here. Great. I may be building another business I didn't, wasn't expecting to do, but I have a place where I can go to and I can do that. It also could be helpful if you're running summits and you want to have one site that's your home site for your business site and a different one just for the summit. And now 
<clears throat> you can take that site and and just make it your say you do that somewhat every year. You can just update those pages and they're all ready to go. Just put, do whatever you need to do to show it for 2023. And we've got it all ready to go. And it would take you very little time because you already have the templates all ready to go. And everything's really all organized and it's super easy to, to duplicate things and, and, uh, and build it again. So you could have one site for your regular site, one site for your summit, and one for testing things out. It's perfect, right? So now you've got, and it's all in one place, right? It's all part of Zendler. It's all one system. So when you learn how to build it in one, you know how to build it in the next one. It's it it this is this is really important for people to understand when you're you're looking at how am I going to build something new for my my web my business right so when you're going to build something new for your business a lot of times people go out and look for new software new systems and instead of doing it that way you could simply take this other site that you have and build it off there. And now you already know how to do it, right? Because you've already learned how to do it. You 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 already know the the, the tools, the system, the, the, how how to move around within within Zendler. Um, everything's there for you, and you don't have to start from scratch. And and that's what I see a lot of people doing is they keep moving. There it's a it's it's a movement from from program A to program B to program C to program D, every time they're changing their business, they're moving to new programs. There's a lot of time wasted in doing that. A, a lot of time, a lot of time, a lot of money, a lot of frustration, a lot of stress, because everything has to be converted and moved and reorganized and, and they're not the same. They're not the same systems. They work differently. Yes, they offer the same things. They, this one offers a course, that one offers a course. This one says it has funnels, this one has funnels. But the way they work is different. And it means a lot of energy in learning something new. If you want to build something new and you're building it on a new site that you have in Zendler, does, the, the the tools are the same. <laughs> what you've already uh, learned is is something you can use again. You don't have to start from scratch and understanding how the system works, and that's key to getting something done quickly. Right? I, I think um, I look at I look at how you know the progression of systems. Right now, if you take a look on, 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 on the web, there are so many people um, talking about different programs out there. There's just literally, I think every day there's something new out there. <laughs> and and they're, sometimes they're really specific, a little tiny program that just does one thing. <clears throat> but I'm seeing more and more of these all-in-one programs, um, bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. But what they miss sometimes is in making it easy for you as the as the uh, the the user of the system to be able to repeat what you've done and make it easy for you to take what you've done here and then repeat it and do it here and move it from place to place because your business changes and you're going to change things so you need <coughs> you need to be able to <coughs> to understand the system enough that you can then create again and i think that's some things that some of the newer systems i'm not seeing that like they're 
they're adding like this wish list of stuff. And a wish list of stuff is nice, but you really got to focus on some core things. And one of those core things is making it easy to, um, to do what you need to do and to then do it again and again and again. And that's one of the things that I'm seeing that Zendler has really put effort into where some of these other systems are not. Um, so I'm, I, 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 I really want to talk about is today was to talk about decluttering and how you can use a tool like Zendler to, to, to go from tons of systems that you probably are already using, lots of programs and apps and websites and all the things that you're doing right now to make it all work together, bring it all into one place and get, get, get your genius in, in on, on learning that one thing. Do that one thing really, really well. And now you can do that over and over and you can duplicate that. You can build whatever you wanna build. Uh, and you can start small. You can, you can bring stuff in from a lot of places. It doesn't matter. You have options to, to, to grow your business within one system. And I, I really think that's what I see with Zendler. And with, this is the kind of thing that I tell my clients about is bring it all together into one place, get it organized in one place. And now you know where everything is and you're not spending a lot of time going and looking for where did I put this and how does this work and how do I integrate this piece in that that level of of frustration and uh, uh, is out of there you know you don't have that level of frustration anymore that you have when you have all these different programs and you're trying to connect them all the time so um, <coughs> um <clears throat> Sorry, it is one o'clock in the morning for me. So, <laughs> oh, you're doing amazing, Eileen. We're so <laughs> so so grateful for you. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, oh, and you're I, welcome. I appreciate it, and I, I'm really um, yeah. This has been great, and I hope that people will understand that declutter your tech is about about getting rid of all those many, many systems that you have right now, you know, and automating the things that you can so you don't have to spend all your time and being frustrated with the tech. <laughs> Absolutely. And we have a David sharing. He says that, uh, hi, Eileen, love that you're using the system as intended and keeping as much as possible in the platform, simplifying and speeding by our workflow. Some real sense of knowledge in here. Make sure you watch this. Okay, thank you. Yeah, so good. And we have a question from Hannah um, as well. So Hannah's question is, um, and it's maybe two questions. What are the most important questions then to ask to keep things simple in tech and then also with your email inbox? So it's maybe two questions. So I think when to, the questions you should ask it when you're looking at for your tech to keep it simple is, look at what the um what are you what do you want your your client to get like where do you want them to go like think about it as your client comes in what are they what are they trying to do where do they want what do they want are are, are they going to buy a course are you just collecting their email are they joining a membership where's the priority like figure out that priority of where that client is coming in and what they're going to do, and what they want and where you want them to go. And that way, when you have a priority, you will, you can focus from there on in versus trying to, well, client could do this and this and this and this, that's true, but that doesn't help you. Where are they going? Where, how are you like figure out the road? What's that, what's that path look like and understand that path and really focus in on that. And that's the questions you should be asking is what's that path look like? 
um, and and don't don't get you know don't get to like people a lot of people do oh I could go here and then I can go over here and over here and you can think of five six ten things of people here's the path and no that's not going to work you really want a very simple path and you want to help them go through that path so when you think about it for questions for your tech is what helps people get through that path and that you can then you can take all the distractions away like because i think we all want to put in all these different pieces of software to do all kinds of things that we don't actually need uh, they're fun i'm not going to say they're not fun i i'm i'm the first person to go oh isn't that neat oh i like that okay <laughs> i get it um but but that doesn't help you to move the client the direction you want it doesn't move your business in the direction you want if you're sending all your clients to join your membership but you really are focused on courses you're not doing it right and that's this is the kind of questions to ask yourself um for your email so i do i will i will admit that i um have way too many emails I don't even know how many I have actually. Um, I have so many different. Um, I create new uh, new email addresses all the time. It's probably a bad. It's a very bad habit. <laughs> I promise. Um, and but what I do is I have rules. So I use rules in my email. So even though I have a ridiculous amount of email, it doesn't matter because I know. First off, I have an email that's only for current clients. How's that? There's no spam in there. There's nothing else going in there. I look at that email. Oh, client paid me. Client needs something. Client set up a, a, a schedule to call. It's only on that email, right? So first off is have an email that is only for that, right? Have an email that's for all that, you know, signing up everywhere for your that you signed up for everybody else's stuff right um have an email for like your logins like when you're doing logins have an email for that so use your emails really think about how you're using the different email addresses is one thing and the other is using rules to put things into folders so if there's something you can uh, it doesn't matter what program you use they all do some sort of rules where you can put them into a folder number one uh, number two is I use uh, some things for starred for some some certain emails. I will have it if it comes from a certain person or has certain things in it. It's always starred. So then I can just look at the starred emails and I go, oh, okay, these are the important ones I need to look at this morning, and I don't look at anything else, right? So that's those are the ways that I do it. And even though I have a ridiculous amount of email, I still find the things that are the nuggets that I actually need in the middle of all that. Oh, that's amazing. Um, <laughs> Sorry, yeah. thank you. <laughs> exactly. And I could relate with you when you said that you have a separate email for clients, you have a separate email for all the signups. I also have one separate email. Whenever I have to sign up to somewhere, I want a freebie, I want a free download or something like that. I use that ID because when I want to learn and when I want to look back at all the learnings I've signed up to, I just go to that email email ID and I see, okay, these are the emails that are coming in. This person is following up this se email sequence. So even I do that, like one email just for the promotions and the marketing. Yep. Yep. Yeah. It, it really helps. <laughs> Absolutely. It does. It actually declutters my main inbox at least. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we have one more question coming in from David and he asks that, what would you like to see added to New Zender? I see, like to see added to New Um, um, I have several things I've been looking. So one of the things that I've been looking at recently, because I've been doing a lot of uploads to the media library is a way to like get an overall picture of it. Um, so I started doing is I, I actually been building, um, uh, just a, like basic Google sheets to have a listing of everything that's in there so that I could have, I could know what are all the things that are in that media library, what kind of media it is, um, and then have a way to track like this, what, how I'm using it. 
like some information about it. So it's because it can get overwhelming when you start having hundreds of pieces of media in there trying to figure out, oh, wait, I, I named this the same and <laughs> I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> There's another problem in there is I see people have, can have two or three um, images and it has the same name, but they're actually different versions of it. So there should be some versioning, a way to version, put version numbers on them so that you know, oh, this one was the old one and this is the newest one, right? Yeah, yeah, I guess at the minute, the only way would be to put some sort of version next to it. So right. like old school, like V1, yeah. V2 right, but next. it just, there isn't a track. <laughs> yeah, that's what I told my client to do, actually, because that's my old school stuff. But I was thinking it would be nice if there was a way to do it within the system. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. And I think David also asked, what is your favorite feature at the moment? Um. I really love the being able to save the blocks. Yeah. <laughs> I can't tell you how many hours that saved me. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh my gosh, that's amazing. <laughs> it just made it so easy uh, to just take that, especially since I had this thing I had to make and it was so painstaking to make and then I saved it and then I could reuse it and then just make the minor edits I needed to and not have to recreate it every time it was, Oh, amazing. I loved it. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. And um, thank you so much. You have been so absolutely awesome. I don't think there's any other questions. Um, was there any like final point you'd like to kind of sum up on? Um, yeah, just, I, I really, I think it's important that we all kind of think about this stuff and like, not just it's easy. I know I, I like to jump on new software. I do. I love to, to, but I've learned that th this past year that it, that's not the way to do it. Right. And, um, it's, yeah, there, you can go out there and you can take a look at it, but you, you just can't keep adding more software to your list because then you're spending a lot of time working on all these different pieces where instead of getting focused in on something that you can build and what happens is your progress really stalls that that's what I see. Right. And it's, I, I personally jumped, I don't know, four different project management systems in the last year and a half or something. Right. And if I, and I was about to jump again and I said, no, I'm going to go back to the one I'm using and I'm going to make it work for me in the way it needs to work. And you know what, once I started to do that, it's working for me. And that's, that's the thing is that we're, we're more likely to jump to the next thing and the next thing without actually giving something a chance and really learning it in depth and understanding how we can use it for all kinds of different things that we hadn't thought of upfront. I love that. That's such an awesome top tip. So be patient and just stick where you are, you know, and make it work. So think outside of the box, yep. you know, and I think we say it a lot in Zen that, you know, as you've been saying through your whole kind of section, there are so many different ways to use it, that it's here and it's packaged in this space, but you can flex and you can change it to fit you because everyone's, you know, individual. Exactly. Yeah. Amazing. Thank you so, so much for being here and being here at this time as well. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, thank you. And I think it's almost 2 a.m. for you now. Yeah, I, I noticed I'm starting to get tired somewhere in there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, it was all awesome. So we really, really appreciate it. And um, yeah, we will let you go so you can go get some sleep. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank you. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye. <laughs> Good night. Yeah, sweet dreams. <laughs> Thanks. Good night. <laughs> oh, amazing. Woo! What a good start! Amazing session. <laughs> I think I got a golden nugget right at the end, which was, though, you know, she was focusing on the tech, but I feel that stay where you are and try to find a solution. 
even if it is to do with something else, a learning, a problem, we try to look at the next best thing that can bring us the solution. Okay, this didn't work. Let us look at the next best thing that will help us out. But what we actually need to do is stay there and look within and see if it's actually not working or is just us looking at the next best thing to jump on from here. Okay, this is not what is working. And we don't reflect within that, you know, maybe it is us that we are not patient enough. So I think that was such a huge learning that I took from her session right before, you know, she was just about to end. Yeah, yeah, I love those golden nuggets. And I think like it's amazing because we do, especially within the sort of arena that we're in as entrepreneurs, it's really easy to see that shiny new thing and go, yes, let me go grab that. But like you said, when you actually, you know, and as Eileen was saying, when you actually put your mind to it, you set your mindset, you go, do you know what? I'm going to make this work for me. Then you absolutely can. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And now we also jump into the second session.